¿Está bien, Mariela? Yes, I just, I got it started right now. Okay, yeah, I think we have to do it, because, yeah, we yeah. don't have enough audience. Okay. <clears throat> All right, welcome everyone to the third quarterly meet and greet from the Self-Determination Advisory Committee. Tonight's topic is going to be on Financial Management Service or FMS. I'm just gonna be your host for the evening and let's introduce our uh, Self-Determination Advisory Committee leadership team. Mariela? Yes, uh, hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Mariela Ramos and I'm the chair of uh, our local advisory committee in uh, BMRC. Karen? Hi, I'm Karen Bonacci and I am the co-chair of our local advisory committee. And my name is Lisa Cully and I am the secretary of the Self-Determination Advisory Committee and also one of the uh, I am the representative from the Family Resource Center in our area, the Family Resource Network. So we just wanna talk a little bit about self-determination before we get started. So the principles of self-determination and what the role of the local self-determination advisory committee is. So that, that role is to help further the principles of self-determination. So the first, um, facet of self-determination is the freedom. You plan your own life, make your own decisions, just like people without disabilities are able to do. Authority, you decide how money is spent for your services and support. Support, you pick the people and the supports that help you live, work, and play in your community. Responsibility, to make decisions in your life, to be accountable for using public money, and to accept your valued role in the community and confirmation. You are the most important person when making plans in your life. You are the decision maker about your services. SDAC role and purposes. SDAC members will be responsible for the following. Providing oversight of the self-determination program, reviewing the development and ongoing progress of the self-determination program, including whether the program advances the principles of self-determination and is operating consistent with the requirements of the section. Making recommendations for improvement to the regional center and the Department of Developmental Services, facilitating the sharing of best practices and training materials. And now a little bit about the Local Self-Determination Advisory Committee from Mariella. Um, yes. So the Local Self-Determination Advisory Committee. Um, so, oh, this is a lot <laughs> to read. Okay. <laughs> uh, so per statute, the Local Advisory Committee members must, must include consumers, family members, the regional center, clients, ad, uh, rights advocate, as well as other advocates and community leaders. The local um, SDAC self-determination um, advisory committee must also reflect the mul multicultural the uh, diversity and geographical profile of the catchment area. Valley Mountain Regional Center appoints half of the members of the committee and the State Council on Developmental Disabilities appoints the other half of the members to the committee. The VMRC um, Self-Determination Advisory Committee meets the third Thursday of each month from 3.30 to 5 p.m. Currently, the meeting is held via Zoom. Link is posted 10 days before the meeting on the VMRC web. Um, 
the SDAC uh, website, SDC, I'm sorry, SDAC tab or on the calendar. The next meeting is November 18, 2021. Um, oh, a lot of acronyms. <laughs> okay, so the SCDD North Valley Hills office is not a voting member on the committee, but provides assistance as requested by the committee. Uh, state self-determination committee meeting. Um, so the next statewide self-determination committee, uh, committee meeting will be November 10th, and it'll be from 10th to 3.30. Um, the link and the agenda information will be available 10 days prior to the meeting. Or are welcome to join. That's me, huh? We need you. If you live in Amador, Calaveras, or Tuolumne counties, there are positions available on the VMR self-determination advisory committee self advocates and family advocates are needed as representatives to the committee to distribute information to others in their area and attend the sdac monthly meetings and work group meetings um application forms are these are the uh, websites you can go to for application forms and english and spanish and I fully recommend if there is anybody here to please consider this. Um, we are right in the middle of voting on a lot of items that we want to uh, facilitate and uh, do for our county areas so we can get the word out more, um, so we can help with training and understanding um, there's a lot going on and we need people that are in self-determination to start um, uh, helping out, not only for, our, for the committee, but for each other. Um, it's a network group too, it's not just a committee. We are parents who are sharing VMRC is not in control of, of self-determination. It's a law and it is uh, to us to, to provide it, um, the current changes that are going on and how we can work with our individuals who are in self-determination and advocates who are helping them. And I'm really looking forward to doing that. We just need a lot more support in the other areas. So please consider joining. So there's lots of information available online about self-determination. So we have left you with some um, places you can look for more information. There's the VMRC website, also more on the DDS website and the SCDD website, State Council on Developmental Disabilities. There are many self-determination groups on Facebook, closed groups and public groups. And if you're interested in becoming an independent facilitator for self-determination, there's a, an as you go, as you um, pace yourself, there's a training online for that. And also the Family Resource Network can um, guide you to additional resources. Okay. Um, so upcoming training, trainings and events, self-determination orientations. So Thursday, November 4th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, so we have a training on that day. So um, VMRC has a training that day. So on Friday, November 5th, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. in Spanish. In Spanish, is that right? I'm not able to say it completely. Yes, in Spanish. Um, see the VMRC Health Advisory for links to register for the orientations. 
so for that you need to go um and check out the uh, health advisory um so you can um register for that um the vmrc um self-determination advisory committee for quarterly meet and greet so please look out for our next quarterly meet and greet january 24th uh 2022 and it'll be the same time from 5 to 8 p.m the flyer and topic information will be announced in our future vmrc uh health advisory The SDAC wants to hear from you. One goal of the self-determination committee is to create training for self-advocates, providers, and families. The SDAC would appreciate feedback and suggestions on what we would like to know more about on the topics of self-determinations. Just like we are informing you today of financial management services. There's a lot of topics we can talk about when we want to hear from you. Okay. Um, so we thank you, ev um, everyone, for being here. And thank you for the opportunity to share with you today. We appreciate your feedback and look forward to working with you all in the future to learn more about self-determination and finding new ways to provide quality services. Enjoy your evening and please reach out to self-determination advisory committee with any questions you may have. Thank you. There is a, a message from Griselda in the chat. If anybody wants to read it. Griselda is asking, why is there such a low number of people in attendance? Was the flyer not passed out to all families? So I guess, I'm gonna answer. <laughs> um, the flyer was posted on our health advisories. It was passed out. I think Dina, you guys also um, promoted it. Um, I mean, it's it's been posted in every website. I'm not sure what happened. This has never happened where we don't have a large number of participants. So I'm of audience, so I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that. I just know we shared the information. The, the flyer has gone out to thousands of people in both English and Spanish. Um, and I, as soon as the date was announced, October, after the last meet and greet, it was sent out, the save the date was sent out right away. Um, but the good news, Griselda, is this is being recorded and people that couldn't make it tonight for whatever reason will have access to this valuable information. I've also posted uh, Facebook and a couple of different parent groups um, to get the word out. I think I posted that on Friday or this weekend or actually last week. Um, and then um, we, you know, we had a low number at a, our committee meeting as well. And to me, uh, Griselda, it's a concern. Um, so us as parents, we need to get the word out. We just have to keep pushing not only um, BMRC's uh, job, it is all of our jobs. So uh, please everybody who um, is a member of the committee and also people who are learning about self-determination, it's a long process of learning. So we definitely um, thank you for coming and would definitely like to get your feedback and also um, spread the word. All right, let's go ahead and move along. So now I'm gonna introduce Liz, Elizabeth Diaz, the um, BMRC self-determination manager to speak a little bit on updates. 
from self-determination. So thank you, everyone. Um, we do have some financial management service providers here. So I want to say thank you to you guys and to the presenters. We have some that have left us and some new ones. Our updated flyer is now on our website. And I've also sent it to Dina. So she'll be able to post that as well with um, all the new information. So where we're at today is a lot of participants in their second year. Um, um, and that's exciting. So the second year, we hope it's different. Our first year we were hit with COVID. So that impacted a lot of services that were on the spending plans and we had to do a lot of adjusting and changes. This is the second year. So it's, here we go again. It's kind of like starting all over because you know, it's, it's different now. So we'll see how that goes. We have a lot of new participants um, that were not in the soft rollout that are now um, in process of transitioning into self-determination. So we um, are working with many people and that's exciting because they were not in the soft rollout. So we have opened it up to everyone like everyone knows as of July. Um, so we're doing that. That being said, we're all still learning. So bear with us. We're all learning together as a community. Um, one of the things is different that people will see is in the soft rollout are what we called self-determination service coordinators who then transitioned into senior service coordinators. We're keeping um, the participants um, on their caseloads. Now what we're doing is working as an intake team so now we will transition participants from traditional services into self-determination services, but the participants will be able to keep their current service coordinator, which is very exciting because I know a lot of participants didn't want to lose their service coordinator. So now they will have the best of both worlds. They will keep their current SC and they will have someone who specializes in self-determination and they will work you know, um, hand by hand, and they will have the traditional SC and the self-determination service coordinator, which the name is changing to participant choice specialist. Um, so that's where we're going next. What we're going next is that DDS has shared with all regional centers that they have these positions or in, in funds for participant choice specialists. Now we're still waiting for those funds from DDS. So when that happens, um, you will see those name changes from our current team, um, from senior service coordinators to participant choice specialists. And we're also hoping that we receive the money for additional staff so our team will grow. So there will be more people working on our team. That means we can transition pe more people into self-determination. Um, so that's really good as well. Let's see. I know there was talk about our self-determination orientations. We have been holding orientations at least one a month for over a year and a half, almost two, every month at least in English. Then we started incorporating the ones in Spanish and there was months where we had three, where we had two English, one Spanish, because we would offer one on the weekends. Um, we um, are now for November, we have the November 4th one in English with translation in Spanish. And then we have the one November 5th, that's gonna be all Spanish. We um, do not have any scheduled for December. That month, we're going to really work on our next year's schedule and see what that's gonna look like. DDS is working on their own orientations um, that they will be providing. That doesn't mean that our regional center is not gonna provide orientations anymore. That just means that people will have opportunities to take it from DDS or from the um, Valley Mountain Regional Center or take it you know, from both because it's a lot of information. Sometimes it takes more than one time to hear it. Um, DDS is going to be providing a certificate of completion, just like we do. So what we were told is that DDS will give the families a certificate of completion and they will ask which regional centers um, 
they are from and our regional center will also receive that certificate of completion. So we will be receiving that. And if, you, if anybody takes the orientation through DDS, they do not have to take ours um, at Valley Mountain Regional Center. So that one will count as your mandated orientation. We don't know if we're gonna be offering it once a month or if that's going to change. Um, since it's going to be offered by DDS, we might not be offering it once a month. So after we gather all that information, we will provide an update to the community on how often we're going to be providing that orientation. We still want to have our Spanish orientations as well. With such low participants that we've had so far, we cannot have it every other month like we were having it, but we want to at least have two a year. So just in Spanish with no translation, just um, direct Spanish, we all at least have two orientations um, next year. And um, just again, inviting everybody to the Self-Determination Advisory Committee. It's every third Thursday of the month. Um, Liz, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just want to make sure um, it's been translated because I see something on the chat. It says, no está en español. I just want to make sure, or like the people who um, who just came in, make sure you um, go into oh. the uh, yeah. interpretation to make yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I can say that in Spanish, Mariela. Okay, sí, gracias. So a todos los que acaban de entrar, abajo donde está el globo, este si lo O prima en el globo va a ser una opción o prima la opción que dice Spanish para que escuchen a la, a la intérprete. Okay, so I just asked everyone to change it to Spanish if they're um, disconnecting so they can hear the interpretation. Um, one of the big questions that we have been having has to fall with our fiscal department. Um, they're not here, but I know there was a section on here for questions that if there are any questions about our process on the fiscal side that we can take that to our fiscal department and gather information and then possibly bring them. I think that was idea to one of our next um, advisory committee meetings. Um, so I'm not sure, Dina, if that was what was part of the agenda, if I got those questions now or if that's just... Yeah, it was under your section, just if there's anybody on that had anything specific towards the fiscal part of Valley Mountain Regional Center that we could take back and the leadership of this committee um, could invite someone from fiscal uh, to come to a future um, self-determination advisory committee. So since it's not a large crowd tonight, I don't know that there are any questions, but that they would like answered, we can certainly take a moment to jot any down. Um, they could go in the chat or people can raise their hand and the leadership could call on them or I'm not sure what you guys want to do. Yeah, I think as we go along and we talk to um, FMSs, um, give us some information as well. I know um, I, I had questions and because I am on the committee, um, I've been getting information as we go along and I have been aware of changes being made. Liz has kept us up to date with everything going on, Angie as well. Um, so being involved in the committee does help with that information. But um, I was getting a lot of other parents um, concerned about how these things run and disinterpretation is mostly, I think, the biggest question in interpreting, um, you know, vendor versus employee, purchase orders versus um, invoices to purchase something. All of those get very confusing language wise to, you know, each, I think, um, person in self determination. So I think just clarity would also help. So if any parents or any um, self-advocate that has questions in regards to that. Um, we did have some other committee members that we don't see anymore um, that haven't been participating in a while due to, I don't know what, but um, I know they had some questions before 
So I don't know if they're here today, but we can um, discuss it and then and then uh, get a hold of them and work with Liz and and get some some answers. So, so Karen, um, I'm I'm sorry, Mariela. I I just want to make sure that I respond to one of the things you said. You talked about more of like definitions and clarity of roles. I'm actually going to do a um, presentation for our our translators. And what I'm doing is I'm breaking down definitions for them um, so that when they're translating, they know what, what it is we're talking about. I can share that with the committee and then you guys can add words to that if that's something you guys would like to do. And we can work on, you know, I can work on those definitions, give them to you guys and see if that's, so we can have something because I know they're different and they're used different under self-determinations. So that's something we can work on. I already have something started, so I can, Great. We, we can just build hey, there's up. Our, there's our next meeting. No. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that would definitely help. Okay. So um, the next committee meeting, that would be great to share. And then we'll figure out how to, you know, distribute that to other parents. And so <laughs> thanks. Karen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Karen, so when you say interpretation, so you mean like the actual interpretation, how it's been translated or what is being said in the um, interpretation the in English, oh, okay. English and Spanish. It's, okay. you know, it, it's, it's like new terms to a lot of us that we don't understand. So if we don't ask questions and we're just assuming what they're telling us, like a POS or you know, a vendor versus an, uh, an employee or um, a personal assistant, you know, well, is a personal assistant a vendor or is it an employee? So a lot of that just, it's just clarity that we're, we're not used to using because, you know, these programs, there's programs that have already been established and they hire the people. Now we're doing the hiring. So we just have to understand um, the terms that are involved with that when you're working with the FMS and VMRC, actually. Um, you know, Tanya and I've gone round and round in conversations just doing the spending plan. Like, what did that mean again, Tanya? I wasn't sure, you know? So it is very confusing and challenging when you're doing the spending plan. So. Um, yeah. No, definitely. That will definitely help uh, the community. Right. So do we have all the FMSs that are gonna be presenting or? Okay. Um... Liz, did you have any more updates? No, oh, that was it for now. And okay, if right. you wanna hear our numbers every month, just come to our advisory committee meetings. Okay, we're going to move on and we're going to go into our first FMS presentation and we've got Aviana Healthcare and Huyen Chan. Welcome. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Huyen Tran. Um, I generally default by Tran just because it's easier to say. Um, I am Aviana's self-determination program manager. Um, and thank you for having me here tonight. Able to share my screen. You should be able to now. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to run through a quick presentation. Some of these are already covered through the orientation um, for the self-determination program. Um, I modified it a little just to be Aviana specific. Um, so let's get to it. So as a financial management, we are the only required vendor um, for the program. Um, and we are known as, or when I describe it, I um, describe the family, think of us as your personal banker or your accounting person. We are in charge of 
all of this, um, keeping the spending plan, the budget, um, paying things out and paying for your providers and your vendors. Um, so as a financial management service, we support with the spending plan, um, use the budget to pay for services, provide you with monthly budget reports, and we assist with the onboarding process for your vendors and providers, checking their background, making sure whoever we're um, onboarding to, into your home to take care of um, your loved ones is qualified and is putting um, you in a safe situation. Um, generally with the self-determination program, there are three models offered, but Aviana actually only offers two out of the three models. Um, the two models are bill payer and co-employer. So then which combination of services can you utilize with an FMS? Um, how do you determine which model you can use? Can you mix multiple with different models? Um, and to determine that, um, you have what I say, maybe one and a half question. Um, the first question would be, will you have employees? And that determine whether or not you're gonna have used a bill pair model or a co-employer model. The second question, keep in the back of your mind is what kind of relationship you want with your employees. So if you ask the first question, um, your answer is no, you'll be working with the bill payer model. Under this model, you'll be working with agencies, vendors, entities only, making purchases of merchandises, um, paying for professional services through um, already established companies or in, um, identify independent contractors um, who meets the qualification. The FMS will pay the bills. Um, we are the people we are going to be paying for people who have already worked with an agency because we're not hiring anyone on directly. Um, and we make purchases of items from the company and have it shipped directly to you. So everything has to be paid through the FMS. Um, going back to the second question, the half question was if, or if you answer yes to the first question, then that determines what kind of relationship you want with um, the half question of what relationship you want with your employees. Um, for Aviana, since we only offer the bill payer and co-employer model, um, the relationship would be that you want to share um, liability or share employer um, responsibility with the FMS. Um, under this model, it still covers everything a bill payer model covers, um, paying for um, vendors, entities, agencies that you'll be working with, any purchases of merchandises you'll have. Um, on top of that, you'll be sharing um, the employer's role with the FMS. So um, you'll be in charge of hiring, managing, training, um, picking the um, employee or the st support staff you would like to um, hire. The FMS's role is to check their backgrounds and qualification to ensure that everything is good and clear. Um, as a co-employer, the FMS will have workers' comp insurance, liability insurance, all of those um, employers' coverage, um, employers' burdens covered. Um, and under this model, it's you would be considered um, be still be considered the main employer because then you'll do all of the ma training managing. You're there with them every day, um, and will be considered the co-employer of just doing all of the back end payroll um, paperwork process for you. So the cost of the FMS does come out of the budget, um, and if Depending on which model you'll be utilizing and how many services you'll have determines how much the FMS monthly fee will cost. Um, it is as low as $50 per month to as high as $165 per month. Um, and you always have the um, right to negotiate with the FMS. So always call them, ask them all of your questions, um, see if there's any negotiations in the prices um, of the monthly fee. So what 
we have to offer um, as stability, savings and support, free spending plan consultations and customized tools. Stability, um, we have 15 years of trusted experience in the IDD community. Uh, we have 15 years of trusted partnership with all 21 regional centers and an in-depth knowledge of the system and the structure. Um, we are a founding member of the California Self-Determination Program State Work Group, and all of our staff are considered essential um, staff. So internally, our office is open through the pandemic. Savings. Um, we have one of the lowest employers burdens rate in the state um, for those who will like to use the um, co-employer model. Uh, we have efficient and exper experienced management that works for you. We offer free consultations and even um, do spending plan consultations just to um, ensure that all of the numbers you're looking at um, are falling in line with um, any burden calculations that need may be um, included, um, any miscalculations of you know um, what the different services are and how they would um, fall in line with what you need. Um, support. We have a multilingual team, um, Spanish, Vietnamese, three different versions of Chinese and Tagalog. Um, Every Aviana support staff is certified in person-centered thinking and person-centered planning. Uh, we offer free one-on-one -on -one consultations and presentations. Um, our streamlined onboarding process, direct payment on behalf of, um, direct payments on your behalf that is fast and secure. So direct deposit, credit card payments, um, or even check to your vendors and providers. Um, we have an online time card system for accuracy, convenience, speed, and record keeping. Um, and you'll have access to our electronic tools and helpful resources. Our onboarding process for a service provider or a direct hire employee is a employee enrollment packet that we now send through Adobe Sign. Um, ABC acceptable documents for the I-9, so two forms of ID, um, live scan, completion for anyone who is providing direct personal care. We are um, only making it required for those who are doing direct personal care. So if you are onboarding someone who is not providing any direct personal care, um, they do not meet, it is not a requirement for them to get live scan with us. Um, and then there is CPR and first aid certification if it's applicable to the um, service code that they'll be providing. Once they are hired, They'll have access to our electronic time card system where they'll be able to submit their hours um, and families will also then be able to go into the same electronic um, time card system and sign off on their hours. Um, our time card due dates and payment schedule is on the um, time card due dates are on the first and 16th of every month by 5 p.m. and payments are released um, on the 9th and 23rd of every month. Um, our vendor um, onboarding process is a general information page along with a W-9 for us to send them a 1099 at the end of the year. We do offer a um, optional direct deposit form in that packet if they would like to sign up for direct deposit. Um, our different payment methods for our vendors are via check direct deposit, um, we've done online or over the phone payments via credit card as well. Um, and then goods and services, so things that you would like to um, purchase um, usually should be outlined on the spending plan and we'll make those purchase requests as they'll come in. Um, we have an electronic Microsoft forms where you'll complete the um, purchase request um, send us the most updated address, what it is you want to um, purchase, along with um, any general information of the item, so the color, the um, any special requests like engraving on the items and whatnot, um, are all could all be noted on the form itself. Um, and we've even done over the phone purchases at local stores um, for our families, um, where they'll go to that store um, and 
pick out an item, negotiate with the um, store owner or the worker, they'll send us an invoice, we'll call and make an over the phone payment for them to then um, pick it up. Um, tips I like to include and um, remind people to keep in mind while in the transition processes, it is highly recommended to start um, on the first of every month um, because for billing purposes, it is just cleaner, easier just to start on the first. We do have some cases that have started mid-month, um, towards the end of the month, but not um, a full month. So DDS has been working on revising those budgets to, um, for the renewal to be on the first of the um, month the following year. Um, it is recommended to start onboarding your the onboarding process for your providers while you are, are transitioning because it could take some time for their background check to come back um, for them to complete all of their um, pending documents. So the sooner you start the process, um, once you determine the FMS, the sooner um, the better it is for them to be ready when you fully transition. Um, spending plans, authorization, and e-billing access must be available before payments could be issued um, just because these are all of the things that will give us access to the budget. If you have any questions, concerns, um, have any changes, it is recommended to always include everyone in one email chain, um, your FMS, your regional center service coordinator, the independent facilitator if you have one, so that everybody's on the same page, aware of your questions, your concerns, or any changes you'll be making so that um, there's no miscommunication. And so this is our contact information, um, our general email address, sjsdp at aviana.com. Um, you can visit us on our website at avianasupportservices.com or please feel free to give us a call at 866-979-1182 and that goes directly to our self-determination program team. Okay, Trent, do you want to take questions now? We have a question time set aside towards the end of the evening, if you're um, able to stay on. Yeah, I can stay on. Okay. So we're going to move then into our next um, presentation by Mainsel um, Services. And we've got Jason Berquist with us this evening. So if you could allow him to share his screen. Thank you. Let me get my shared for you. Give me one second. Oh, oh you got it. Okay. And let me. Yep. All right. Thank you. All right. So I'm with Mainsel. I'm the director of our participant directed programs here at Mainsel. Um, we have been operating as an FMS in multiple states for over 20 years. Um, we've been working in California specifically for um, over 10 years both as an FMS for participant-directed programs, um, and then also in traditional services in Northern California as well. Um, we've been um, providing FMS to um, respite, daycare, transportation, and nursing families, and then started working in self-determination a few years ago when the soft rollout started. Um, we offer all three models of FMS services. So we offer the bill payer, and the co-employer that Tran talked about. And then we also offer the sole employer model for people who want to um, be the employer themselves. Um, um, so she already talked more about the bill payer and co-employer model. I'll just speak a little bit more about the sole employer. Um, so you don't need to have that repeated, but the sole employer model is where um, the program participant or someone in the family becomes the legal employer of the um, any workers that you hire directly. Um, and then our role is still to pay the employees for you. And then we also handle the payroll taxes on your behalf as well. Um, there are some added responsibilities um, because the FMS is not the employer in any way of the workers. Um, and we're just really your payroll agent, kind of like your ADP with a little added responsibility as an FMS of helping you manage your budget. Um, but um, in sole employer, you're also responsible for some of the um, um, insurances like workers' comp and liability insurance. Some of the FMSs will help you 
get that. And we have that uh, at Mainsville. We help you get that workers' comp uh, insurance. We have a policy that um, we're able to uh, let you use. Um, um, some things to know about Mainsville that um, when people ask, you know, why why should I choose Mainsville? Um, it really depends on what what is a good fit for you. We might not be a good fit for everyone, um, but these are the things that we're proud of um, that we wanted to share with you. Um, we are we provide, pride ourselves on excellent customer service with one point of contact. So um, when you start the enrollment process, you'll have one person that you work with, and that will be the person throughout the enrollment process, and then also while you're using self-determination as well. So hopefully that will help you build a relationship with that person. Um, you'll understand each other. You'll um, know if you prefer communication via email or phone, um, you'll get to, you know, your contact at Mainsville will get to know what's in your spending plan and who your workers are. So hopefully that will help um, bridge the gap when there's um, things that need to be worked on. They'll, they'll already know what's happening with your plan. Um, we also um, uh, really, one of our core values at Mainsville is collaboration and partnership. Um, we want to work to make this program successful. Um, for each individual, but also as a whole for California. Um, it's still, we're still all learning. Um, so we we're happy to work with um, independent facilitators, program participants, the regional centers, um, all the other FMSs as well. We've really been working together to make things work. And that's what people should expect um, when you choose Mainsville as your FMS, um, trying to get things to work and figure things out. Because what, while we're all learning, Maybe we have to figure out a way to make that purchase that no one can figure out how to get to happen. Or what is what is the strange rule about, is, is this person an employee or are they an independent contractor and how can they get paid? And so we're committed to helping people figure those things out. Um, another thing we're proud of is our systems and our reporting. Um, it's really important to families uh, to know what's in their budget and what's still available for them. And because this is all new, um, most people aren't used to having to manage their budget and make sure that they know how many hours are left or how many dollars are left um, so that they last till the end of the year. So we wanna make sure we have accurate systems and that we can report that to everyone um, monthly and even more, excuse me, more frequently as needed. So um, we, we really have some great tools for that so that people can be supported in managing their budgets. Um, so for if someone chooses Mainsville, um, our enrollment process is to contact us, let us know of your choice to choose us. And of course, feel free to contact us before that to ask any questions you might have um, about how we operate, share with us any anything in your spending plan that you think might help us um, answer any questions that you have as well. Um, we send out our enrollment forms for you, um, also for your employees um, and any vendors that you may have. And then, um, of course, those forms need to be returned to us to complete the process. And while that's all happening, people can be working with the regional center to create and finalize their spending plan. Whether you have an independent facilitator or not, you know, they might be part of that. Um, and then all of that can be working simultaneously. Um, we really want to get everything set so that there's no delay in getting people started. Um, and um, just as Tran had said, we want to make sure we have everything we need. We need all the enrollment forms. We need the spending plan that's been reviewed by the regional center, and we need the POS as well. So um, that goes back to our collaboration and partnership. We need everyone working together to make sure we have all those pieces in place so that everyone can start and be successful uh, on time. Um, I have my contact information here. I can put it in the chat too, in case people don't catch this all, but feel free to um, call us by phone. You can email me directly. And then I have our website uh, link on here as well for Mainsville. And then, um, of course, I can stay on and answer questions at the end as well. All right, Jason, thank you so much for your presentation. And we're going to move on to Nicole de Guzman from GT Independence FMS. So Nicole, go ahead and share your screen. Okay, let me pull it right up one second. Oh, 
one second. Okay. Okay, hope it's visible now. Um, so good evening, everyone. My name is Nicole D. Guzman. I am with GT Independence. I am a field service representative. So how GT Independence began. Uh, we were founded in 2004 and we were created out of the basic need of a parent trying to provide the best options for their child. Um, GT Independence is family owned and operated. We currently operate in 12 different states, including California. Um, our founders, the Carmichael family, have a son named Ben. Uh, ben is pictured here on the left. Uh, ben was born with a development disability and his parents wanted to support Ben to live in his own community and make his own choices, as well as hire the caregivers of his choice. However, uh, we are now owned and operated by Ben's siblings. Uh, Ben's brother now advocates for his own daughter, Maggie. Maggie is pictured here on the right with a smiling face. Uh, Maggie was born with a rare genetic condition. Um, Maggie and Ben are some of the many reasons why GT and, um, you know, why we do what we do here at GT. Uh, Self-determination is basically the way for us um, here. We do also offer other programs besides self-determination, um, and we support those in California as well. But I know today we're, <laughs> we're only talking about self-determination, so. Uh, so here, um, self-determination, the program empowers individuals to have more control in developing their service plans and selecting service providers to better meet their needs. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot more flexibility and self-determination. Um, the models that we offer, we offer all three models. So I know, um, you know, bill payer, uh, we offer a co-employer and sole employer. Um, I know, thank you, Aviana and Mainzel for <laughs> kind of elaborating on those. Um, I know you guys have heard a lot of, about the differences. Um, we accommodate all languages. Uh, right now we do have staff that speak English, obviously Spanish, Korean, and Mandarin. Um, we also have translation services available um, to accommodate other languages. Uh, what GT Independence does as the FMS? We assist with the building of the spending plan. Uh, we do run background checks and onboard participants, employees. Um, if they, if participants choose the co-employer model, uh, we actually have a contract with um, a, uh, it's actually through Certifix. So Certifix has multiple locations throughout California. Um, so we have a contract with Certifix to where if they choose co-employer model and they have to get a live scan, um, we, you know, we are able to pay for that. They just kind of give Certifix a code and then Certifix bills us directly. Um, so they don't have to come up out of pocket at all. There's no reimbursement needed because it's, it'll be covered. Um, we issue vendor paperwork per the request of the participant and we provide ongoing support and manage payroll, tax filings and insurance as well. Uh, GT Independence also has a portal available online. Um, it's available to the participant and or representative and regional center. Um, they are able to access monthly spending reports um, so that it, they are able to see how much has been spent out of the budget. Um, however, I, I wanted to kind of give a heads up sometimes when we have to do expenses. So let's just say we have to purchase. Um, a gym membership for a year and it's purchased today. Um, and so we call and pay that via credit card. That expense is not gonna automatically show up um, same day. It might take a couple of, of weeks to reflect on the spending report just because we have to reconcile our credit card um, to make sure you know we report it and then, and then it'll reflect on the spending summary. But we also ensure that when um, translating those summaries, we allow, you guys to understand, okay, this is what's missing. 
everything else is correct. There might be a credit card purchase or two, but um, you know, those would be the, the, the minor differences. Clocking in hours, uh, we do have our own caregiver app. It's called Caregiver by GT. Um, and it enables employees to clock in and clock out for each shift. Um, the participant can also electronically sign off on the employee's hours. So it can be as easy as um, the employee has their phone, they have the app, they're clocking in for their shift, clocking out. They can go to the participant or representative, ask, can you sign off on my time today? Or they can do it at the end of the pay period. They're not having to sign every shift. Um, they can wait till the pay period's over and they can go in and sign off or click, click, click on their computer and approve, approve, and it's automatically sent to us. Um, when does GT issue payments? Um, so our pay periods, um, it will be from the 1st through the 15th. And then the second pay period is the 16th through the end of the month. Uh, pay dates typically land on the 10th and the 26th unless those dates fall on a weekend. So if it falls on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, then they can expect uh, their payment the Friday before. Um, communication, we are available via email, phone calls. Um, you know, we take questions all the time, inquiries, referrals. Um, you know, we're able to answer questions via phone conferences. I've done Google Meets. Uh, some people prefer Teams, some people prefer Zoom, um, like I said, or Google, um, or just over the phone, whatever, you know, whatever is, is their preference. Um, we do have a designated customer service, California customer service team also, um, that's available Monday through Friday from eight to five to take phone calls, um, especially for those that transition um, into self-determination if they have any questions after the fact, um, or employees if they have questions after. Um, below is my contact information. Um, we do have other representatives that cover other regional centers as well, um, because we do cover all 21 regional centers in California. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Nicole. Um, we're going to open it up to any questions that anyone may have. So if you would like to ask a question, Go ahead and raise your hand and I will try to call on you. Okay, we have a question from James Weissman. Go ahead and unmute and you can ask your question. Good evening, ladies. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, Miss Nicole, uh, like if you could like private message me, um, I kind of want your number. Okay, I'll go ahead and put it in the in the chat if that's okay, James. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Or Snapchat, whatever's fine. Okay, so we're still available for questions if you'd like to raise your hand or ask a question in the chat. Thank you, Doug. I just want to bring up something, um, Lisa, you can stop me when uh, you have any other questions. <laughs> um, onboarding. I don't know how many people have heard that term, onboarding. See, we're talking about FMSs and language. <laughs> I personally never heard onboarding, and I've been on the spending plan for over a year now. <laughs> so. Where does that term come from? And um, did we always start using onboarding with self-determination? I think you... I brought it up in my presentation. I don't know if, if uh, Jason or uh, Tran did, I apologize. But when we refer to onboarding, it's basically Actually, getting- Actually, all of you have. So oh, that's sorry. why, that's, a, that's, no, that's okay. That's why I brought it up because you all brought it up and I, I'm assuming I, I know what it is because you're talking about employee employer, but I've never heard the term onboarding. And I don't think, you know, or 
I dismissed it while I'm talking because I know what I'm talking about at the time. So I'm like, whatever that means, you know. So yeah, please explain. Thank you. Um, I would say so to simply put it, um, getting your employees ready to start. So running a background check getting their paperwork situated. So with us, with GT, we send paperwork via DocuSign, so it's electronic. Um, so, you know, initially when we ask for employees information, we ask for their name, phone number, um, email, um, address if you have it. If not, we can get it from them. And then we send them their documents to fill out. Um, obviously at that point, we will need their rate of pay that you guys have determined. And, and what codes they will be working. So code like service code according to your spending plan or what service they will be providing. Same thing with a vendor. So if you go through an agency or a vendor, um, it's not so much onboarding, but kind of getting them prepared to, to uh, be able to start services in SDP for you. Um, so there, theirs is a simple contract, uh, same thing, email name, phone number, um, so that way everything is ready to go for when you know your transition date starts um so yeah i would say that would be a, a short and easy definition so in addition to the question is it just a fms uh, term or is it um do we use it if bmrc too or is it just an fms term that's that onboarding So you would be hearing that on your FMS side. Um, we usually, when you hear it from us, it's when we let you know, okay, now that you are transitioning, one of the first steps is once you have your employees to make sure you contact your FMS so that they do um, their processing for hiring. So that's what you're hearing from us. They're calling it bringing them on onboarding. So I think that's the difference right there, What just how we explain it. Mm -hmm. they, they have a term, I think, to explain it, and we just explain it so we know, <laughs> let you know what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, Karen, it's actually a human resources term. So um, oh, okay. you hear it usually when someone is being hired or bring, being brought in. I'm boarding. Got it. Boy, things have changed since I was in HR. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to tell you how long ago that was. <laughs> okay, do we have any more questions? General so I, questions about FMS or I have a question. question. I, I, it's an obvious one, but I just would like uh, any FMS or uh, who want to answer this. Um, so I just want to like if you can explain the difference between the sole employer and the model employer so that, you know, the people who are here can um, can understand it a little better. I get. Thank you. Um, um, in the in the co-employer model, um, you're really sharing some of the employment responsibilities with the FMS. So the FMS is legally the employer because the FMS has an employer identification number. Um, they're going to be they're going to get their W uh, W2 at the end of the year. It's going to say the FMS was their employer. Um, they that you may have to follow some of the FMS's policies for all of their employees because they're the employer. Um, and you would be the co-employer, which means you're still in charge of choosing your employees, supervising them, scheduling them, managing them. Um, but the FMS is legally the employer and handles all of the payroll and all of that. Um, in sole employer, you are legally the employer. We set you up with an employer identification number. And the FMS is not the employer at all. Um, we do still process the payroll for you. We're hired to be your payroll provider. Um, so we still provide payroll. We still um, file all the employment taxes. Um, but then you have the control over your employees. You know, you wouldn't have to follow uh, an FMS policy uh, necessarily if we had a policy about only certain people can um, drive uh, in, uh, someone somewhere, that policy wouldn't be in effect because we're not the employer in that case. Um, but you do have that additional responsibility where you 
you really are just, you really are the employer and we're there to still help you through things, but um, you really have the most control in that model. So I understand uh, one, so whoever chooses a sole employer has to have a um, uh, kind of like a com compensatory workers comp. Workers comp, yeah. Yes, so how does that work? Yeah. At Mainsol, we have a policy that that you can use, that you get to use. So you don't have to go find your own. Um, in, in some FMSs, you may have to find your own. They might help you do it. I'm not sure what um, GT does, and, and Nicole can speak to that, but we, we help you find that. So that's one of the things that for some people is a barrier, but if you, if you choose Mainsol, it's not a barrier because we have a policy for you. So, and is that based on what is a charge? I don't know if you're able to tell me now, but uh, what is a fee? Do you go by how many services uh, the um, for, uh, participant has or how does that work? Yeah, the FMS fee is based on which model you choose and then how many services are in the plan. And then um, you also have the employer burden cost, which is the, um, the taxes and the work comp. Um, and that's an additional amount. So we all have different fees for that, depending on what our workers' comp amount is or what our unemployment rate is. So that will be different for each FMS. So the workers' comp is all the same for everyone or is it different for every uh, participant who chooses a sole employer? Um, it's going to vary by FMS, but uh, everyone who uses, like everyone who uses us as an FMS, the work comp cost is the same. It's based on a percentage of your payroll. Oh, I see. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions or be able to take questions about the FMS process in general or a specific for a, each individual vendor that's here this evening? Go ahead and raise your hand or put a question in chat. Okay, Liz, would you like to ask your question? And this is for all of our FMSs because we have such a, um, a large community, Spanish speaking community. Do you guys have any staff that speak Spanish directly? Like if a Spanish speaking family were to hire or go through your FMS? Um, I'll speak for GT. Uh, GT does have uh, customer service staff and GT field representatives that do speak Spanish. So yes. Um, at Aviana, we do have an Aviana care team that does um, speak Spanish um, and would be able to assist. Um, and we actually just hired our um, program coordinator specifically for self-determination that will speak Spanish fluently. Um, right now, we actually don't anymore have a Spanish speaking coordinator to work with. So we're working on, on that. Okay, thank you. And we're still open for more questions. Go ahead and raise your hand or put something in chat. Now is your opportunity. We have all these people here tonight. And I see Karen's hand raised. Go ahead, Karen. Yes, I'm being formal. Um, okay, question for FMSs is related. Um, uh, well, I want to say related service. Boy, I'm going back. You can tell my mind is tired. Uh, going back to IEP words. Um, actually, what I want to talk about is um, community services, like um, we brought up gyms and um, that kind of stuff. The law had changed there for a while where we weren't supposed to do any type of social um, services, like is bowling covered anymore? Is Disneyland covered or Monterey Aquarium? Um, I, if I can remember correctly, I think in the beginning 
of the soft rollout, we I think some of that was covered. And then I think there was a change in self-determination. So FMSs, can you please help us with what's going on now? That's a really good question, Karen. <laughs> um, and it's not an easy answer to just say, yes, it's covered or no, it's not. That's the hard part. Um, um, it really depends on each circumstance. Like, is it something that's going to, is it something that's listed in the person's IPP? Does, does it fall under uh, one of the service categories? Has the regional center reviewed the spending plan and said, yes, that's appropriate. Um, I know the FMSs have met with DDS and asked for a little more guidance on some of those things about what really is allowed, um, but also to allow flexibility within SDP, they don't necessarily want to give out hard yes and no answers. So um, it leaves us in a spot where, yes, it gives us flexibility, but also maybe not clear answers right away. <laughs> so I don't, I know that's not what the answer you're looking for, um, but I, I don't think that any of those necessarily are hard no's, but um, it really depends on if it's appropriate or not. And your FMS may ask questions about something in a plan and say, oh, let, let's find out or let's ask if this is okay. And that's when it's good to consult with your FMS and your regional center before you, you know, get really excited about I'm going to do this thing and then realize, oh, it might not be possible. I know um, a lot of people have questions for DDS and we're not really getting answers. So I just wanted to get the, the FMS's perspective because like you said, you are the you know, you're, um, you are the people who are dishing out our spending plan money. <laughs> so, you know, we need to know. And I, and I know the regional centers are trying to do their best as well as, you know, complying to what DDS is saying. And, and um, but it's really hard for parents and self-advocates to really say hey you know i've always i've always had horseback riding on on here and and now it's being questions you know that it, it's not right so i can understand why people are having concerns in regards to that so um i guess this is kind of an ongoing um situation that we're gonna have and as far as the, um the uh uh, the new person who's uh, the upcome, whatever the name is. Wait, I have it oh, right Oh, the ombuds person? Ombuds, um, um, yeah, first. the yes. ombuds person. <laughs> you know, and I don't know what that person is going to end up saying if and if that's, you know, if if that person is going to be a, a big part of that discussion. Um, but... You know, I think any input in collaborating here today would be very helpful. So if anybody else has any information, and thank you for sharing, Jason. I think her role as an ombudsperson is to try to help us figure those things out or where, not necessarily to tell us an answer, but to say, these are the questions everyone's having. So let, let's go to DDS and say, these are the things we need training on at the FMSs need training or the independent facilitators or who, who needs this information and how can we provide a little better guidance? I think that's a role that the ombudsperson is supposed to play. Yes. Okay, moving along. I'm still taking questions. So go ahead and raise your hand or put something in chat, anything regarding FMS or your budget. Um, in relation to the FMS. Griselda made a comment in the chat. It says, no, it's not the FMSs, it's the regional centers. Okay. All right, um, Dora, can you go ahead and unmute? You can ask your question. Yes, good evening. And at the risk of uh, repetition, because I came in late, I wanted to ask what relationship, if any, do FMSs have with the Regional Center Accounting 
department and how uh, how is that working or is it uh, I've just heard different things I want to hear the their perspective on that hi um, I can go ahead and answer that um, so um, Liz Angie um, myself we um, meet with their accounting department once a month at the end of the month, just to discuss any changes or anything that we're still needing from them. Um, and they have been great at getting us what we needed um, and adjusting the, um, working on the spending plan revisions um, and getting things to us in a timely manner. Anyone else wanna to respond to that question? Uh, with GT, uh, we do not have monthly meetings, but um, I know that uh, VMRC staff that I communicate with, they're uh, very good at, you know, if I'm missing a POS or, or if there's some changes that need to be implemented, um, you know, they're a phone call and email away. Uh, I have good communication with, with the VMRC staff that, um, that I've, I've worked with so far. So what, what it, you know, the original question, because I really don't know, and I really want to know, is what relationship do FMSs have with the accounting department? Do they do any approval? Do they do any follow up on uh, clients purchases? Or how, how does that work? Because actually, that's where I'm hearing from the community that sometimes there's a hole up or whatever it is that they need to purchase or whether they want to change, they want to change a certain line item to another, et cetera. Can anyone speak to that at all? So spending plan revisions, um, even though there is that, the knowledge of having anything less than 10% moving from one category to another should not require um, any regional center approval, but there are back end things that have to be done on the authorization side um, with the accounting department, even with case management, having just to you know, put that piece of um, editing the purchase of service, moving that much fund from one service code to another, it has to be done in order for us to tap into those fundings. Um, and that's also why we have um, monthly communications with their accounting department to ensure that these things are getting done um, and we're getting what we need in order for us to avoid any lapse in services for our clients. Any other, anybody else wanna comment on that? Because I'm hearing that there's a, like a holdup of some sort when uh, getting services or a change, like I said, a line item. Uh, you said there's authorization. Is Dora, that to hold? I can, I can uh, share from my experience as a parent and okay, any, good. any other parents that are out there who would wanna share who are actually in self-determination have done their spending plan, please share because this is exactly why we're having this. Um, there, there have been times when I've had to make changes and I still have to make some changes. It just happens. <laughs> but, and, and I kind of, I'm kind of like regretting it because it, it is a process and it takes a while. And remember, this is something new for everybody. So when we first, when I first started with the spending plan to understand that every time you, you have a you do your best to try to put the money where you know you're going to spend it. And, you know, it, 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 the important pieces for sure are, I think, the first things you want to put through. Don't worry about if you have, if you don't use all your money at once. You put, the, put the money in where you need it at first and get that money to... VMRC and tell them what codes you want to use. You have your IPP that tells you where you can use the money. You let them know where you use the money. They go ahead and make sure that what you're requesting is for sure in those codes. If they have any questions, they'll let you know. But once that's done, 
they send the purchase order requests to the accounting department. That's my understanding. Now, when that's done and it's approved, then you're ready to go with the FMSs. If any questions come from the FMSs, they will question uh, a Valley Mountain Regional Center. And then usually your case coordinator will let you know if there are any issues or concerns. Um, the other money, the, say you're, you're trying to hire somebody and you can't find a person, but you pretty much know what your spending plan is gonna be for that person, okay? You probably need to have the employee first before you tell them, well, I want to put this money in for this code, but I don't have an employee yet. You don't need to spend that money. It could still be an unmet service. Be, until you hire somebody, then you put that money through. So every process and every, every code, they have to put through the purchase order. Now, if you make changes to that all of a sudden say, you have hired somebody and in order to get that person, you, and um, you forgot to put in the workers comp um, into their hourly rate, say, say you were gonna pay them $20 an hour and they get their first paycheck and their paycheck was only for $18 an hour. And they said, well, you said you were gonna pay me $18 an hour or a 20 and I only got 18. Well, then you call FMS and say, what's wrong here? And they're gonna say, well, did you calculate it with the, the rate for the insurance? And that will cause you to have to adjust it and make a change, which goes back to VMRC and which goes back to them having to redo a purchase order. Uh, is that what it's called, purchase order? I forget. Anyway, <laughs> um, so that can hold up, a, that can also hold up a situation because those things take time. Um, and there's multiple situations that happen like that before you know what you're running into. And so that's my recommendation would be if you know the services you need right away, put them through. If you don't have somebody hired, at least try to do your budget where you know where you wanna spend the money. Um, that will make a difference. I hope that helps Dora. Um, that's the best I can do. And, uh, BMRC and FMSs can, can also add to that. I think that just my opinion, and I'm not, I'm not part of the self-determination committee, but I do attend a lot of the work groups, that maybe that is something that we really need to, to work on or look at if it's taking, you didn't say what amount of time it takes, but I'm imagining that it's a, 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 a long enough span for the family to feel that they're not getting that service that they wanted or uh, equipment or whatever it is that they have been trying to get. And so I think that maybe that's something that maybe the committee can well, it's kind of an individual, I, I think you hear a lot because it's oh, it's individually based and right. the best, you know, the more people that do it, the more we can share and, and from, you know, from my experiences, overall, the experience has gone very well considering all the changes. There have been some blimps that took a few months to get paid, but there's a couple things you have to remember. And like um, Tran mentioned, you if you get if you put the put the orders in or or put the spending plan in before the first, and I think Liz or somebody said, if you get it to us before the 15th of the of the of your IPP date, say. 
um, you start your plan in July. So by the 15th of June, you want to make sure that spending plan is into them so they could get it going so they can get the process working. Now, that's only a two week period. That's not a lot of time for all that processing to happen, to tell you the truth. That's pretty damn good, I think, because in the beginning, it was longer. <laughs> so okay. two week period is, go, goes pretty fast now. Now, okay. with that said, when you have an unmet need, um, don't try to put something through if you don't know for sure what it is, because that's going to cause chaos. So um, FMSs and, and the regional center work pretty well with you as long as you know um, what your spending plan is. If you're unsure what the spending plan is and you're just looking for areas to spend the money, that's not the way to do it because it gets very confusing. Um, that's what helps to have an independent facilitator um, to help you understand, you know, this is what your IEPP says, this is where you should be using your money. Um, so, and I tell you the truth, I think a lot of people aren't doing their spending plan because they don't, you know, ask those questions or are unsure or just haven't been able to hire somebody at this point. So they don't know what they want to spend you know, on, on um, such things. Yeah, thank you, thank you for, thank you for uh, sharing. Um, I, um, I wanted to ask uh, Senora Dora something. Senora Dora, uh, do you uh, have any families who are experiencing those kind of uh, situations where, um, where you just asked? The, this is, yes, this is some questions. of the things that I hear and what, what is, uh, I'm trying to prevent is to have other families discouraged by listening to uh, some of the issues. And this is what they consider a big one, that it's, it's uh, difficult to process changes in line items, uh, even as simple as equipment. But maybe like Mrs. Bosacci just said, maybe this was in the past. As long as the committee and everyone's working on trying to make it uh, a, a, not an easier process, but a more effective process where families are not interrupted with whatever it is that they need for their PCP or their uh, program. Yeah. So if, if, if that's the truth, if that's true, and I, I do believe, Mrs. Bonacci, that things are better now, that's good. Maybe I was listening to people that were that we're uh, not experiencing that yet. But the discouragement kind of, you know, it, it really concerns me that people would be uh, discouraged to go into the program because, oh no, my God, I heard this, this and this. So that's why I wanted to talk directly to, to the so, FMSs and, and their relationship with the accounting department, what, what it is at uh, VMRC. So, Senora Dora and everyone, one thing to keep in mind is that to make sure you, um, you know, like uh, each um, regional center client has, um, you know, the needs specified in, in the IPP, because that, that it'll make it easier for the services you want to get for your child, for your loved one. <clears throat> so I I mean, that's why I, I understand and you guys correct me if I'm, but I, that that's my understanding that if you have a, like a, some need that your uh, loved one needs and, and you wanna buy a, a service or a, um, or something that can help him or help her, um, it'll be easier uh, to to put it in the spending plan and 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 then get it approved uh, from the FMS. I mean, that's okay. the way I understand it. So I think what Dora is saying is that she's hearing that when changes are happening in the spending plan that's already active, there's a delay. 
yes, there is a delay when you when you compare that with traditional services, because with traditional services, we can go in the system and a service one day, start it another one, it stays in the regional center, it gets started, it gets paid for right away. Now we have an entire new um, agency that's working, providing those payments. So it's going to be a delay. A family cannot expect to change the spending plan today and have it be paid for by the next day because it doesn't work that way. The FMS has to get that information. It takes 24 hours for our fiscal department to see when we make a change in our system. So when the fiscal department gets that change that we did, it takes 24 hours for the fiscal department to approve it. Then it takes another 24 hours for the second fiscal person to approve it. Then it takes 24 to 48 hours for the FMS to finally see that in their portal. So it's going to take longer if they want to end something and they're so used to traditional, we explain that it doesn't work that way. There are steps and it's gonna take longer than a traditional POS. It, that's just, we can't change it. That's us working the fastest we can um, just because of the time it takes for it to transition from one place to another and for people that need to see it, to see it. And, and that's the delay when there's a change in the already done spending plan. Can Thank I just add to that? But I also wanted to add to that, that have as a committee, have uh, we looked at how other people are doing it, how it compares to the, the timeliness of the process. Uh, has somebody found a way to, to make it more effective or is, just, is this just the way it's going to be? And if that's the way it's going to be, then I guess we have to accept it and move on. Well, I think, um, Dora, I also want to say that if the parents were coming to the committee meetings as well as some of these other places, um, uh, these like this meet and greet, um, I think they would find out the process and why it does say in the, because we're collaborating about it, we're discussing it. I just don't, I, I hear from parents, but I don't see them. I don't see them coming here. I tell them to come in, collaborate and find out what's going on. Um, we can only share so much and tell them how the process works. And like I said, within, within the time they- Pues aquí can't... estamos, pero no nos escuchan. No, 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 desde hace rato tengo la mano levantada y no, no me toman en cuenta. So she's saying she's here, nobody listens to them. She says she's had her, her hand raised for a while and no one has called Okay. Her. Okay, go ahead with, uh, okay, Señora thank you. Señora Reina, Elizabeth, disculpe. Okay. ¿Puedo hablar? Eh, ¿Puedo sí, hablar? De sí, haga su pregunta. Ok, mira, mi pregunta es, ¿estos viris son exclusivamente para la para el comité, las personas del comité o las demás madres podemos formar parte de estas reuniones? Es para todos, es para el, uh, usted, los que quieran pueden entrar. ¿Y cómo, cómo podemos entrar si no nos damos cuenta, no nos mm. mandan invitación? Porque yo ya chequeé todo mi correo electrónico y no tengo nada. Okay, um, so that, um, mi entendimiento um, es que se les envió la información. ¿En qué so fecha, they're... más o menos? ¿Qué fecha? Tendría que preguntarle a Douglas o a, a Elizabeth. Um, lo voy a traducir. I'm going to translate what was said. So, uh, um, what she said was, first she asked if these meetings were for the committee members only or if it was open to the public. Mariela explained that it's open to anyone to come in. I'm sorry, I don't have a light. I just moved, <laughs> so it keeps on turning off. Um, then she um, stated that she, so if it's open to everyone, how come she never received the information? Um, Mariela said it is her understanding that it was sent out and she's asking when, what date was it sent out because she didn't receive anything. Yeah, I can answer that if, if everybody wants to. Um, the, this meeting has been on our website calendar for over a month, uh, I believe September 2nd is when we put it on there. Um, I don't know if everybody here receives the newsletter uh, that we put out, but every Friday we put out a uh, we call it a health advisory and we put it out in English 
And um, we've had this flyer in there for uh, about a month and a half every Friday. Um, our director of consumer services, Tara Sizemore Hester, has also. Um, ¿Y si lo ponen también en español o puro inglés? If you need to get translated, um, maybe she needs some direction. Claro, uh, porque. Uh, she's asking if the flyers only in English or if it's in Spanish as well. Great question, and I just wasn't at that point of my answer yet. The flyer is also in Spanish. Uh, we also put the Spanish uh, health. Okay, advice. porque no lo he recibido. Every, everything Entonces, that. Entonces, a ver si para la próxima. I guess I'm not answering the question. Do you, do you want me to answer it or no? I mean. So, so, you, so it's been posted. She said, she said, okay, thank you. Maybe next time she'll receive it. Yes, and what I did, um, if you get in the chat, I attached the link to the page where you can just sign up for our health advisor. You just click on the click on the link, um, and you can, and if you have an email address, you can enroll to receive our health advisory. We send it out every single week for the last 83 weeks, one in English, one in Spanish. We also um, put that link on our Facebook page, Posiblemente. Page, um, our website. Um, so yeah, we have about 12,000 um, email addresses that it goes out to every week. Um, so, you know, if, if, if you didn't get it, I, I'm sorry. Okay, gracias. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's out there. I'm, I'm not sure. Um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know why. The ¿Y cómo le hago para registrarme? Okay. So. Okay, so she asked, how, how does she register? Um, Perfecto, gracias. You, you just added the link you said to the chat? Yes, I added the link to the chat. And um, all you have to do is click on the link. It is, let me tell you what time I added. Was the it. one left at 643? Muchas gracias, muy amable. Sorry, um, 638 is the, it's 638 is the sign up page. But I did put um, our last, our very last uh, Spanish uh, newsletter in the chat at 6.43 p.m. She said, thank you, very kind. Okay. De nada. Okay. So, um, Dora, did we finish with your question? Yes, I think so. Like, okay, uh, thank yeah. you. I'll, we'll Just try to get more we'll try Gracias. to get more clarity from the committee itself. So Great. okay. Okay, thank we'll you. talk about Absolutely. it maybe at the next meeting. Right. I just wanted to uh, mention to say something. I'm gonna say it in Spanish. Y, um, so solo quiero decirles que estas juntas es para todos. Está abierta para todos. Pueden pueden venir y este expresar cualquier uh, preguntar cualquier pregunta que tengan relacionado con el tema que, que se está hablando o también si no es del tema algún algún algo que tenga que está relacionado con autodeterminación eh, también es para 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 lo, lo las cosas buenas que les están sucediendo en autodeterminación. Para eso es todo esto. Y, y son, todos son bienvenidos aquí y pueden hacer las preguntas que quieran. Y, y gracias por preguntarnos de si no les llegó el link y, y asegurarse que, que esta vez sí les llegue. Eh, y gracias. I, I just wanted to say that um, all, all of you are welcome and, and you can answer, um, ask any questions you want. And this is for, for us to meet and ask questions regarding the topic we are uh, talking about or we are having for that specific uh, day. And also is for successes. Um, sharing successes in self-determination and any other questions you may have about self-determination. Yes, I agree, Mariella. We need people to come here and, and ask questions and let us know how it's going with their self-determination and what their needs are, because that's the only way we're going to help collaborate and make it better. Um, I just wanted to add 
what Liz had said about the original, you know, um, services versus going to self-determination. It, it definitely is a big change from that. And I think we try to make people aware that all of a sudden you become an employer and it is a lot in that itself is, is a huge difference. Um, because you're the one who has to pay, well, FMS helps you, but you're the one who has to pay the vendors and the employees. Um, to that as well, Mariella, when we last committee meeting, I thought was really exciting because we were talking about doing our own Facebook page. And we have one of the parents who's a committee member who is going to start um, doing that process. And that is another way to get information to our parents and self-determination. So look for that and come to our um, committee meeting in November. Um, and uh, Mariella, I think you're the one who knows the dates of the third Thursday. Definitely, uh, we have a yeah. lot of things going on and a lot of things to um, exciting things that we're going to be purchasing and t-shirts and stuff like that. So please come yeah. to the committee meetings and um, learn more. Sí, le, les, eh, les pido que, que vengan al Comité de Autodeterminación. Nuestro siguiente junta será el, el 11 de noviembre, es correcto, November 11th. Is that, do we have it right? 18th, I'm putting it in the chat. Okay, so nuestra siguiente junta del Comité de Autodeterminación será el 18 de noviembre. Es muy importante que, que asistan cualquier preocupación, cualquier uh, pregunta sobre el tocante a autodeterminación. Es muy importante que la vengan a hacer acá. Y es, es, es muy importante. So les, les pido que vengan. Gracias. Y gracias por asistir a, este, a, este, a esta junta también. Okay, I'm going to open it up for one last um, round of questions. If anyone has a question, please either raise your hand or put it in the chat. As a committee, we will take all of the chat with us and we will discuss it at our next leadership meeting and or the next um, meeting of the full committee. Tanya Delgado, um, please ask your question. Go ahead and unmute, please. Hi, good night, everybody. Uh, I just want to clarify that I just check on my email, the hell advisory you sent every Friday. And yeah, um, I think on the bottom, if we check on the cell phone, you have to see view entire message. And I just clicked there and I saw the invitation for this, um, for this meeting. So yeah, uh, there was the invitation there. That's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Tanya, for your, your feedback. We appreciate it. Okay. This is the very last call for question. I don't see any more hands raised and I don't see anything else in chat. So with that, Mariella, would you like to close out the evening? Go ahead and unmute. Sorry. It's okay. I want to thank you everyone for being here. Um, all of our guests, the FMS, uh, Nicole, uh, Tran, and Jason, and all of you, um, the public who were able to make it today. And we, um, we hope you can make it to our next uh, self-determination committee meeting, which will be November the 18th from 3.30 to 5 p.m. And thank you again. See you, see you next time. And one other thing I wanted to mention is that we're having our um, Y State Self-Determination Committee meeting. And this is where all the um, chairs from all the 21 regional centers uh, meet. And uh, so, so I encourage you to come as well. So let's, um, 
so les quiero decir que um, gracias, gracias por haber venido a esta junta y, y les, les animo a que asistan a la siguiente junta de autodeterminación que será el 18 de noviembre de 3.30 a 5 de la tarde. Eh, recuerden, es muy importante eh, si ustedes van a participar en el programa de autodeterminación que se presenten a este, a este comité porque es muy importante. Eh, cualquier pregunta, eh, cualquier preocupación que se traiga al comité. Eh, muchísimas gracias por haber asistido y que tengan un, una buena noche ya. Ya no es noche, ya es tarde. Quiero decir, ya no es, ya no es tarde, ya es noche. Eh, bueno, eh, nos vemos. Eh, Good night, everyone. Bye bye, all. Thank Buenas you. Buenas noches. Thank you. Thank you. Great bye -bye. job. Thank you. Uh, great job, Mariela, Karen, and Lisa for your leadership. Thank you and thank you to the FMSs for being here tonight. Uh, yes. Thank you. Adios. Buenas noches. Thank you, everyone. Buenas noches. And the BMRC team. I can't, we can't leave you guys out. Thank you, Andy. Yeah, we're forgetting you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're unforgettable. We can't forget you. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Angie.